Hello everyone. Welcome back in this uh, next part of this video that is the distribution of oceans and continent part 2. So I hope you all are very well. Uh, today's discussion is the follow up discussion of the part 1 that we had completed long ago. So this is the first video that is the distribution of oceans and continent uh, where we have studied the concept of continental drift theory that how the continents are drifting we have seen this uh, example of the uh, that uh, the maps that if I cut the map the world map it can easily fit uh, like a jigsaw puzzle. So this concept uh, we have done in our previous chapter. Next we have seen some of the important evidences about Pangaea, Panthalassa. This thing we have seen the video we have analyzed that how the continents uh, started evolving with time. Uh, this video we've analyzed after that we have seen that how the continents uh, started breaking from pangaea to its the divisions takes place to laurasia and gondwana land after that the division took place further and the present day earth we can see and finally after all of this we have seen some evidences and all today we will discuss about the concept of ocean floor configuration so the previous idea was based on continent particularly but one thing we have to understand that continent it's uh, whenever we are saying that it's a continent so i am comprising the entire landmass of this planet okay so continent and ocean floor it somehow have a different meaning also but for a generalized purpose you can consider it it is a, a, a whole aspect so distribution of ocean and continent ocean floor configuration ocean floor it is very simple ocean floor means you know the floor of the ocean in a simple way configuration means the mechanism and the structure what is the inside the ocean floor we already know that only 10 percent ocean we have explored yet remaining 90 percent oceans are there which is you know we haven't studied a lot so configuration is very much important we have to understand the configuration so welcome in this lecture everyone myself Pratik Chakraborty let's start this lecture today we will understand the concept of um, a convectional current theory by Holmes and ocean floor configuration that will be these two points will be our main motive so in your right hand side you can see a uh, image this is a true image of our planet earth if I if I just squeeze all the water, if I just take out all the oceanic water, our planet Earth will look like this. That's why in every time I used to say that the shape of our planet is not circle, not a sphere. It is known as geoid. G-E-O-I-D. Okay, it is known as geoid. So, you can see the map here a little bit. So, this is the shape of our true planet. Okay, if you see our planet through satellites and sensors it will look like this okay so let's start our concept that is convectional current theory by Holmes convection means what convection means circulation in atmosphere one process is very much prominent that is the movement of warm air and cold air what happens when the warm when the air gets warmer it rises up because it becomes lighter so the warm air when it rises up with the altitude it again start cooling and when it start cooled, cooling down it again comes down in the same position in the ground. So this warm air and cold for example when the cold air is in the surface it gets again warmed up and it is going upward. Again it is getting uh, cooler and again it, it is coming down. So this circulation of warm and cold air it's very much prominent in atmosphere but inside the earth there is a concept of the liquid that we have the semi-solid and the liquid uh, structural compositions it also do the same way the gaseous and the liquid structure they used to do a convectional circle arthur holmes in 1930 discussed the possibility of convection current operating in the mantle portion i hope you have remembered the characteristics of mantle these currents are generated due to radioactive element causing thermal differences in the mantle portion so causing thermal differences in the mantle portion holmes argued that there exists a system of such current in the entire mantle 
portion that is this convectional uh, you know of the radioactive elements it is there and these radioactive elements when they used to do a convectional circle a circulation due to this they having a radioactive elements this is an attempt to provide an explanation to the issues of forces on the basis of which contemporary scientists discard the continental drift theory many scientists they used to discard the continental the uh, that continental drift theory many scientists they have thought that no continental drift theory is not possible how continents can be done but whenever this convectional current comes out convection current supports the continental drift because the drifting is only possible when there is circulation going on for example if you are moving a table a big wooden table it is very difficult to move if there is no wheels so a wheels provides artificial circulations when you're moving the table a table has its definite mass so circulation provides the movement of the continent so let's understand this concept through a animation so you can see the structure the layout you can see and this is the uh, the concept you can see the circulation you can it is visible so these uh, shady part lighter then the core you can see this part particularly this part this is mantle this part is mantle my i think my cursor is moving in the screen this part is mantle okay and this part is core okay so what is going on in the mantle see all the air is going upward it is converging and again it's coming down and what is happening here the formation of continent and the spreading of the continent okay the continent is sp spreading so particularly this means that the new continents new materials are coming up due to volcanic eruptions and this new material again making the continent in a more precise and more defined way particularly this concept is known as convectional uh, current so a current used to pass and whenever the current used to pass con continents converge themselves to some extent and they used to you know move out like this way so this pattern of movement it is very much visible we can see okay because we all know that a mantle contain both liquid and semi solid state in both the layers upper mantle and lower mantle so these uh, convectional current uh, is very much visible so what happens when the convectional current uh, took place particularly subsidize or subduction of plate takes place subduction means what when one plate is moving below inside the other okay or submerging uh, uh, in the another plate this is known as subduction okay this is known as subsidizing the plate is subsidizing particularly so these things we, when the plate is subsidizing on the other hand we can see the upliftment of features for example the uh, example if you take the concept of indian plate and the eurasian plate because indian plate is going inside the eurasian plate and that's why the structure of himalaya is forming and day by day the rise of himalaya we can see because initially every year a millimeter or a few uh, centimeters it's submerging inside okay so we can see from here this concept okay the plates moving inside so whenever this things happening happens cracks forms uh, fractures used to form and uh, many times thick lava used to uh, you know uh, store in these places and be beneath the mountain and these lava uh, these uh, particularly magma they used to make a chamber beneath a mountain and it flows with the uh, span of time so like this way particularly convectional current particularly the circulation of the lava or the cir circulations of the radioactive elements uh, takes place inside the earth so that is a basic concept of convectional current okay so why this concept is very much important see detailed research of the ocean configuration revealed that ocean floor is not just a vast plain but it is full of relief relief means what in in our surface we used to see mountain plateau plain you will not believe me in ocean also we can see mountain plateau plain okay so expedition to map the ocean floor in the post war period provided detailed fracture, fracture picture of the ocean relief and indicated the existence of submerged mountain ranges that means you will not believe me uh, particularly mountains you can see inside the oceans okay inside the oceans structure for example approximately height of 1000 meter or 2500 meter this kind of mountain you can see the mountain a shivalik range of mountain that we used to see in front uh, in our topography in the surface that kind of mountain we used to see beneath the oceans also deep trenches 
trenches means what gorge you can see in topography surface what you say it is a gorge okay within two mountains there is a gorge or a pass that kind of gorge or pass we used to see in the ocean and these passes are known as trench mostly located closer to the continent margin the mid oceanic ridges were found to be most active in terms of volcanic eruptions the dating of the rocks from the oceanic crust reveal the fact that they are much younger than the continental crust that means each and every day our ocean is uh, you know it, they are uh, they are changing and the surface of the ocean the structure of the ocean the layout of the ocean is also changing rocks on the either side of the crest of oceanic ridge and having equi uh, distance location from the crest were found to have remarkable similarities both in terms of their constituents and their age that means what if you see europe and africa if you see the rocks from there and if you go just if you cross atlantic ocean and go to north america and south america the evidences of the rock will match that day we have studied the concept of jigsaw concept that how the continents are matching so mapping of the ocean floor is very much important so this is an example of mariana trench in your left hand side and on the right hand side you can see submerged mountain ranges just see we can see this kind of structure inside the ocean next important part that we uh, we will deal today is the ocean floor configuration in this section we shall note a few things related to the ocean floor configuration that helps us in understanding the distribution of continents and ocean the ocean floor may be segmented into three major divisions based on the depth as well as the form of relief these divisions are continental margin deep sea basin basin and mid ocean ridges these are the three important relief division we used to see in our ocean floor configuration so in the uh, here you can see highest mountain everest the height has been given here okay approximately because this is a cumulative graph okay height highest mountain you can see here this is the mean sea level okay zero degree simply zero degree so we'll just going inside the ocean so when you just uh, after zero degree after uh, just when you're entering towards ocean the first high land or uh, upland you can say that where the ocean and continent meets for the last time is the continental shelf okay after this continental shelf you can get a slanting position or a slight downward movement this slope is known as continental slope okay and after clock uh, crossing continental slope if you move more downward you will get the ocean basin floor okay you'll get the ocean basin floor and after that the uh, the depth will start rising next the, here you can see the deepest ocean uh, this depth has been given here so from this point one thing is very clear that the ocean is not in a in a very uh, symmetrical way it, it is not like that so we can see a lot of ups and downs in ocean floor configuration also in our later class we will reveal that what are the relief structure that we can see inside the ocean so continental margin from this diagram we have to understand uh, about that what is going on inside the thing so these uh, from the transition between continental shore and deep sea basin basin so continental shore means what this continental shelf and deep sea basin that is ocean basin floor this part so from this part this arrow to average depth where it is ending here this is known as continental margin okay this is particularly known as continental margin okay the, they include continental shelf it includes a continental shelf you can see in this image after that this include continental slope and finally continental rise and deep ocean trenches okay and if you go beyond you will see continental a deep oceanic trenches of these the deep oceanic trenches are the areas which are of considerable interest in so far as the distribution of oceans and continent is concerned many ocean have continental trenches but not in that uh, sorry oceanic trenches but not in that format may some of the important trenches we used to name that 
Mariana Trench is one of the important trenches. So we will discuss about the concept of trench in this chapter. Okay, so please have a look in this diagram. This is a layout. Okay, just our coastline is ending, and when the continental shelf ends, finally our oceanic floor, our configuration of oceanic floor started. Okay. Next, we will see the concept of abyssal plain. These are extensive plain that lie between the continental margin and mid oceanic ridges. Okay, this plain is known as abyssal plain. Okay, uh, the abyssal plains are the areas where the continental sediments that have moved beyond the margin get deposited. For example, a, riv a river is coming from here. It crosses the coastline. It it crosses the continental shelf. It crosses the continental slope, and finally it deposited all its sediment to the abyssal zone or abyssal plain. Okay, after the abyssal plain, our ridges will start. That is uplands or some relief features. It will start. Okay, so that is a basic layout of our configuration of our oceanic configuration. Next point that we are moving is the mid oceanic ridge. This forms are an interconnected chain of mountain system. See, inside the ocean, we have we can see mountain system within the oceans. It is the longest mountain chain on the surface of the earth, through though submerged under oceanic water. Just see the range. Okay, from here, it started from southwest Indian Ridge, and it's going. I I'm talking about Atlantic Ridge. Just see. This is the Atlantic Ridge. Okay. The stretch of this ridge is, if you consider three Himalayan ranges, it will co uh, consist of three Himalayan ranges, the length. Okay, so you can see here the mid-Atlantic ridge. After that, there are a lot of ridges. That is Southwest Indian Ridge, Central Indian Ridge. Uh, uh, after that, Southeast Indian Ridge. We having Chile Ridge. Okay, Galapagos uh, uh, Ridge. After that. Um, East Pacific and Pacific Antarctic regions. So these are the some of the very important regions we have. It is characterized by a central rift system at the crest, a fractioned, uh, fractionated plateau and flank zone all along its length. I will show you the image. The rift system, a rift means what? A rift means two up uh, mountains and there is a one submerged area. Okay, two mountains and one submerged area that is a rift. Okay, that is a rift. For example, if I just make it like this, uh, I think yes. So these uh, my two fingers are the uh, two upland areas, and this my thumb is the ridge. Okay, like this way, it is a rift valley. So, a rift system you can see at this crest uh, is the zone of intense volcanic activity. In the previous chapter, we also discussed about the volcanoes and the mid oceanic volcanic system. So particularly this kind of ridges we can see inside the oceanic structure distribution of earthquake and volcanoes you have already started studied this so i am not deliberating all the things here so uh, i'll just show you a map okay this is our earthquake zone map deep earthquake zone map you can see that is shaded in uh, deep grayish color after that shallow earthquake centers okay circles you can see uh, uh, that is grayish deep grayish color circles you can see volcanic eruptions small black dot you can uh, so entire ridge that we have is shows this kind of probability because these ridges are very much dynamic it is growing okay it is expanding so volcanoes or hot spot these things we can see so here it's an example that uh, the mid atlantic ridge you can see after that peru chile trenches you can see so these are some of the important trenches and ridges diagram is there and this is what about i would like to say that this entire process is goes on inside the uh, oceanic system where you can see that asthenosphere i hope you remember the concept of asthenosphere in mantle we have studied the concept after that what is going on Plates are moving into two opposite direction. You can see arrows. Okay, they are moving two opposite direction. So what will happen? All the lava will come and it will submerge the place. Okay, so these uh, things are moving in a opposite direction. You can see this thing. You can see it is moving towards this arrow and this arrow. It is moving towards. Okay, so there are some important concepts of transform for convergent convergent means what convergent means coming together the image i have shown that animation i have just uh, uh, that uh, 
make you see there that the all the plates uh, the two plates are coming together that is the convergent boundary divergent means what they are moving like the separating that is divergent okay transform fault means what transform boundary that means two plates are moving parallelly two plates are moving parallelly they are not harming each other so these concept are there in ocean floor all the concept we will analyze in the, in our part 3 chapter okay so just today is just a basic idea that what is going inside our oceanic conf configuration we used to say island arcs uh, oceanic crust rising of magma you can see here okay when the plates are going below that is known as roll back when it goes below it will melt again the plate will start forming due to convection uh, process so that is a very much dynamic process very rich dynamic process we can see and the same side you can see it's a more delay, uh, 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 explained way in the diagram you can see that rising of magma convectional circulation going on okay rising of magma and all so uh, this thing is there so i hope you have understood the concept of convection uh, circulation convection current uh, the concept of convection current theory and how the configuration is going on ocean floor configuration the most important configuration that what is going on inside the earth we have seen so i would like to uh, end this chapter uh, by showing you the animation again so just a minute um, uh, it will yes so let's see the animation again once again we revisit the animation okay so from here you can see that rising of magma convection circulation is going on and the plates are diverging in nature they are moving apart so when they are moving apart the magma started flow and on the other hand what you can see the roll back concept okay that is the concept of diverge convergent that a plate is going inside the another plate that is also known as subduction okay moving inside so this is a oceanic floor situation in every ocean more or less particularly in the ridges we used to see this kind of configuration okay that is an example of the configuration so that's all uh, about today's lecture um, in the next lecture we will discuss about the concept of the ocean floor configuration in a more detailed way thank you so much we will meet in the next lecture take care